I'm Matthew Stone, Deputy Director General, International Standards and Science of the World Organisation for Animal Health, the OAE. One Health is a way of thinking, a way of approaching problems that takes into account the role of animal health, the role of human health and the role of ecosystem health and to coming together uh, to create a, a complex environment where these problems exist. The OAE as the global organisation with a mandate for standard setting in animal health has had a long history of collaboration with our tripartite partners, the World Health Organisation, WHO, and the Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United Nations, the FAO, to think about the challenges, the health challenges, that we face today uh, through this lens, this lens of animal health, human public health and ecosystem health all interacting in a way that we need to be very mindful of as we're setting standards, as we're designing our control programs uh, and as we're thinking about the big challenges that we have, particularly developmental challenges uh, in many countries in relation to health services. The OAE lists 117 diseases of uh, livestock species and aquatic animals. Uh, and uh, so these are the list of diseases that we focus on. But of course we're very focused on new and emerging diseases as well. And we know that as humans encroach further and further into the ecosystems that uh, bring them into contact with wild animals, we're seeing the emergence of infectious diseases from new sources. So we know that uh, around about 60% uh, of human infectious diseases are caused by organisms that also infect uh, different animal species. Uh, and so this is a very important context for the relationship between human health and animal health. The OAE implements the One Health concept at the global level, first and foremost by ensuring that our core mandate areas, our areas of data collection uh, our, on, uh, on the global animal health situation, our mandate around uh, international standard setting and our mandate around the capacity building for veterinary services. All of this takes place within a context where we recognise the relationship uh, between animal health, uh, human public health and ecosystem health. So for instance, for standard setting, when we take, let's take bird flu, uh, avian influenza, zoonotic influenza, recognising uh, that our surveillance systems for wild birds have to uh, take into account the ecology of avian influenza viruses, uh, the international patterns of spread. And so uh, our standards have been developed to ensure that we're encouraging countries to undertake uh, the surveillance uh, in those wild bird migratory pathways keep that going from a seasonal perspective so that we understand the seasonal context for uh, the, the, the risk associated with zoonotic avian influenza. And of course, within our uh, domesticated populations, our poultry populations, we're ensuring that we have uh, a good understanding uh, of uh, the biosecurity context that these industries exist within and this has a national setting as well, a national and regional context that we have to be very mindful of. So our standards need to take into account this overall arching picture to create a, a framework for surveillance activities that then supports the trade activities. So our trade standards that look at establishing uh, freedom uh, at a regional level, at a country level, at, at an establishment level, uh, the surveillance that needs to occur to be confident in that freedom. And then when we're trading in, in poultry and poultry products, understanding uh, what elements of risk need to be managed 
uh, in terms of uh, the, 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 the risk that those pathogens are going to be present uh, and what mitigation steps can be taken uh, and certified between trading partners to be very sure that uh, the, the risk of transboundary spread uh, is fully managed and able to be uh, and uh, product is able to be traded internationally in a way uh, that uh, national authorities, uh, the veterinary services can be confident in. At the heart of the One Health approach for the international organisations is the tripartite agreement. Uh, the WHO, the FAO and the OAE have a long-standing collaboration. Uh, we've identified common objectives uh, and our priorities that have served us well over the last uh, five years uh, take into account zoonotic avian influenza, antimicrobial resistance and rabies as key uh, problems, key challenges that we collectively face that demand a One Health approach, a One Health way of thinking uh, if we're to uh, put in place effective mitigation strategies in each of these areas. Wider than that, uh, the three organisations within the tripartite have expanded from those priorities to now be considering new and emerging problems uh, such as uh, the Ebola issues which we know uh, bear this close relationship between the encroachment of humans into uh, an, uh, ecosystems where wildlife exist and the exposure of humans to pathogens uh, such as the Ebola virus uh, that uh, reside in wildlife reservoirs. So these new and emerging issues. But we've also got uh, neglected uh, diseases or, or diseases that have been around for a much longer. For instance, zoonotic tuberculosis, a very old disease that we, we know a lot about really, but in fact at a national level the, 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 the context in which uh, zoonotic tuberculosis exists can be quite varied. Uh, there can be a range of other species, other animal species involved in the epidemiology. The living conditions and the contact uh, between humans and animals within livestock husbandry systems creates a particular context for exposure and transmission. So understanding uh, diseases such as zoonotic tuberculosis um, uh, also demand this One Health uh, uh, approach. But even bigger than that, the biggest challenge that we collectively face is capacity building for health services. We know that in, the, in many low and middle income countries in the developing world, there's a big challenge to develop the veterinary services in particular, the OAE's focus, but also in conjunction with development of health services. And we need to get the two talking together, uh, working together, focused together on common challenges. And our experience has been when we've undertaken exercises to bring these parties together, that they invariably find uh, common problems to work on that demand this One Health approach, but also, even more than that, in their individual work and uh, they learn a lot from each other from the approaches that, they've, that they're able to bring uh, to their individual programs, to understanding their national context and, and how to get the focus of, of politicians and, and financiers in their country to achieve the support for the development programs uh, in public health and veterinary health uh, that are required. The international organisations are very focused on ensuring that our collaboration at an international level on One Health is really driven deep down into regional networks and into national networks and even into lo local networks of collaboration between veterinarians, between ecologists and between public health specialists. So, we're always within the OE encouraging our network to reach out to their counterparts. 
when we're working with our reference laboratory network. We're encouraging them to reach out, find that collaborative space with the public health networks uh, operating in their region that the WHO uh, operates. So our reference laboratory network and the FAO reference laboratory networks, which are focused in the, in the veterinary and the animal health space, have this close relationship and are sharing reagents, sharing knowledge uh, and interacting on a regular basis with their counterparts from public health. Similarly with our collaborating centres, the OAE has a network of regional collaborating centres. Some of them focus strongly on One Health topics. And of course, within those collaborating centres, often they're based in, in, uh, in university environments or they may be based in, in government uh, or quasi-government settings. We're continually promoting the idea that they should be also reaching out, finding that way of collaborating uh, with their counterparts so that we're driving this One Health approach down from international to regional to national and local level. At the national level, we have our network of 180 member countries. Our key contact point is the delegate, who tends to be the head of the national veterinary authority, which plays a key role in the veterinary services of those countries. Often they're the chief veterinary officer of, the, of these countries. The delegate is supported by a network of focal points, and those focal points in critical areas such as surveillance, animal health notifications, wildlife, laboratories, uh, this network of animal production and food safety. All of this network uh, is supporting the delegate to ensure that there is a, a, a strong and productive and operational relationship with the counterparts in the public health space in particular, but also in the conservation of the wildlife uh, and whatever are the national institutions that, that are, are dealing with wildlife and conservation and ecology issues. So we find and we take this approach with the workshops that we run at a national and regional level. It's very much a problem-based approach. It's finding those common challenges that at a national or regional level uh, need to be worked on through this One Health approach. So bringing the parties together, giving them a common priority, a common challenge to work on and helping them, giving them the tools, facilitating the contact that can be had to understand the challenges across this broad continuum. So they're thinking about, they're designing uh, interventions that are taking this full approach. And, and rabies is a classic example. When we think about the epidemiology of rabies in many countries with wildlife reservoirs, but then spill over uh, from those wildlife reservoirs into uh, dog populations. And those dog populations existing in urban or rural settings where dog population control uh, pet management, uh, approaches to waste management and, and the provision of uh, feed sources that sustain these pop populations is very important. And from there, if rabies gets established in these dog populations, the exposure of the human populations with devastating consequences uh, when we're thinking about uh, uh, a, a disease such as rabies, which uh, kills tens of thousands of people uh, still uh, internationally, but is readily, readily controllable uh, through mass vaccination approaches uh, of, in particular, the dog populations, which t tend to form that key link between the wildlife uh, and the humans. So our approaches, our, our design of uh, national and regional approaches uh, to urban rabies control really de demand this One Health approach. And the, the tripartite has established this ambitious uh, program of elimination of urban rabies, dog-mediated rabies by 2030, uh, and it can only be achieved through a One Health approach.
The future for the One Health approach is very strong. This idea has taken root in fertile territory at the international level amongst the tripartite, driven down into regional uh, and national levels, but also primarily amongst the practitioners themselves. The people who are out there at the coalface solving the challenges, managing the interventions, designing the programs that demand this One Health approach. Everyone now acknowledges that it is the way that we need to work. The big challenge that we've got is resourcing these approaches, supporting them with tools, helping bring the parties together, uh, and helping them to find those common priorities. Because this is not a theoretical concept. It's an approach that is rooted in operational challenges the challenges at the national level that we all need to be collectively working on. So we need to identify what are those common priorities and that is the crucial first step to then bringing the parties together. But I think uh, the One Health approach is here to stay. It has to be uh, for the international organisations. We're refreshing our priorities again. We're re-looking at our strategy. Uh, this is something that we need to do every five years or so uh, to ensure that the new demands, the new challenges that we're facing, the new and emerging issues are being recognised and the interventions, the One Health approach that we're bringing to our inter interventions stays current, stays fresh, stays focused on the world's needs uh, because this is uh, an area where uh, the world needs the international organisations to show leadership but that leadership also flows down uh, into the national and the local level where we need the parties to be working together.